In addition to the new masking fluid layers that we have in Rebel 3, we also have some upgrades to the existing stencils from version 2. And they do a lot of the same types of things, but they have some really amazing flexibility to them now, which I think makes them useful in ways that masking fluid layers are not. Now that said, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to clear this layer out so that we're not looking at that artwork anymore. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and come up here to Window and come down to Stencils. If you don't have that open, I want you to go ahead and do that right now so that you're able to see the stencils. And if you want to, you can come over here and scroll this down so that you can see all the stencils. You can see there's quite a lot of them. So the idea here is that a stencil is basically just an image or a selection that has been captured that is then a mask. And it's really no different than a masking fluid layer. However, like I said, there's some power to these stencils that the masking fluid layers do not have. And that's probably one of the best reasons to use stencils still, even in light of the fact that we have masking fluid layers. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab this chestnut. And you can see that this comes in now, and this is exactly the way that it worked in Rebel 2. So what I wanna do is I wanna come over here first of all, and I wanna scale this down a bit and then move it around. And you can see that's basically the idea of a stencil. So we place it where we want, and then we could paint right in it, and it would act very much like a masking fluid layer. If you come over here to the fly up menu for this, however, you're going to see that we have some new commands in here that we didn't previously have. Now, previously we had the invert, flip horizontal, and flip vertical. However, now we have border and tile. So what do border and tile do? Well, the border basically takes this outside edge past the edge of the stencil and fills it so that that area is no longer paintable. It's a big improvement because now this effectively becomes an instant masking fluid layer. Likewise, if we come over here and choose tile, and I want to point out that border and tile are not compatible, meaning that if we choose one, it automatically disables the other. So we don't need to disable border. We can simply click on tile. And what will happen is you can see instead of getting the border, now it automatically tiles that stencil over the course of the entire document. And this is one of the major powerful elements of working with stencils versus working with the masking fluid layers. You can create these nice patterns. And again, because this is all live, you can rotate this, you can scale it, and you can even come in here and choose the flyout menu and choose to turn off the lock size ratio. And with this enabled by default, what we're gonna be getting is that whenever we scale, we're gonna be keeping the aspect ratio of the original. If I turn that off and I come over here and I begin to scale, you can see that I can then begin to alter the transformation of that in a non-uniform way. And because this is live and it's being tiled, I can paint within that right away. So let me just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush. I'm gonna get a color that's gonna stand out against this. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin to paint. And you can see that this does exactly what it's supposed to do. It allows me to paint a pattern over this entire document. And I was able to transform that and see it interactively. And so this is a really, really, really nice way of creating masks that you're going to be using for pattern effects. And, and that's really probably what I primarily use stencils for at this point, because masking fluid layers are better for directly painted artwork. But if you're gonna be doing any kind of transformation or you're gonna be doing any kind of work where you're gonna be doing tiling or something like that, then stencils can't be beat. Now, I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna to choose to remove. And once I do that, you can see the results of that. So like I said, it works very much like the masking fluid layer. However, there's a tremendous amount of power within these stencils, thanks to the idea of being able to tile them and transform them interactively visually. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna clear that layer out because we don't need to see that anymore. And I wanna show you one other new command. So I'm gonna come over here to the flyout menu and you're gonna see that we could create a stencil from image file. And we could create a stencil from a layer, meaning the alpha, the transparency of the layer. And this is really no different than the effect that we were getting with the masking fluid layers. We also can create a stencil from selection. And this is all pre-existing. This is all stuff from Rebel 2. The new one is create stencil from layer and it's image, not alpha. So what this is doing is it's gonna pay attention to the grayscale values of our image. And let me just go ahead and give you an example of that. So I'm gonna come over here and grab pastel. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a black and I'm gonna choose a white. And we're just gonna go ahead and start with the black. So the first thing that I wanna tell you about this is that this is going to be something maybe that's a little bit different than what you might expect. In the sense that I'm painting with black on this layer. And as I begin to paint black, you might think, well, okay, this might be something that's going to be masked out, but you'd actually be wrong. Black is going to be the same thing as transparency. It's going to be revealing the mask, so to speak. Whereas white is going to be the opacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin to paint in with some white. And you can see the white's over the surface of the paper. And the idea there is that you might think, well, there's not gonna be any paint going there because of the fact that you know it's white and the paper's white. And so therefore there's really no difference. But the fact of the matter is, is that if I come over here and I turn off the visibility of the canvas, you can actually see the white paint. 
And the way that this new command is going to work is it's going to look at the white paint and it's going to say, okay, this is the area that I want to mask. And the black or the transparent areas are going to be the areas that I'm going to be revealing. Any shades of gray, and I'll just come over here and grab the blender and I'll begin to blend out. Any shades of gray that are going to be existing between black and white are going to be partially masked. And we'll see this in just one second. So now that I've got that, I'm going to come over here to the flyout and I'll just go ahead and turn the canvas back on. And I'm going to choose that create stencil from layer image. It's going to go ahead and create the stencil. And you can see that where it was white, it's going to be masking. Where it was black or where it's transparent, it's going to be revealing. And I can paint in those areas. And where it is partially gray, meaning that you know I blended between the black and the white, you can see it's partially selected. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this off of the document. It's still saved there. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to clear that layer so that we don't have that artwork anymore. And now I'm going to go ahead and get a watercolor brush. I'm going to go ahead and load that stencil back in. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a different color, something like maybe a green. And I'm going to go ahead and begin to paint. And you can see exactly what I mean. The white is going to be masking, whereas the black and the transparency of that layer are going to be revealing. And we're going to be able to paint in those areas. And any shades of gray are going to allow us to partially paint into those areas up until it becomes pure white. So the idea here is that you could use grayscale values and paint in a stencil if you wanted to, and then use that command of the create stencil from layer image, and it will grab those grayscale values and create a stencil. Remember, white is going to be the masked area, black is going to reveal, any shades of gray will be partially masked. So I'm done with that. I'm going to come over here and choose to remove, and you can see exactly the effect that we were expecting to get. So it's a really nice way of creating interesting grayscale based stencils that you can then use as masks. It's a little bit different than what you might be getting when you're using the masking fluid layer. And the reason why is because the masking fluid layer only pays attention to opacity, whereas this is going to pay attention to the grayscale values. Now that said, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to clear that layer out. I'm also going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need to save that particular stencil. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes to accept that value. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and choose to close that because we're not going to work with that for the next video.